Hello, welcome to the Chinese Super League show brought to you by Orientivity. I'm Shazad Haq here with Rish Roshan Rai. Uh, we're going to talk very shortly about some of the big stories that have happened this week in the league. But before that, let's recap some of those results from round two. Well, it was noticeable that uh, of the eight matches played, there were five draws in it. No big score lines like we had in week one. But the one that really stands out is Shandong Luneng's defeat of Guangzhou Evergrande. You can be sure we'll be going into that match in a little bit more detail. But first, uh, let's talk about Carlos Tevez because mm. reports have come through, especially from his own coach, Gus Poyet, to say that <laughs> he's not really settled, uh, particularly with the language and the food Russian. Mm. Uh, when you're getting paid that kind of money, do you have much sympathy for that argument? No. Unbelievable. Really, just get on with it, Carlos Tevez. And what was strange was Gus Poyet actually coming out and, and mm. making these, uh, these revelations known to public. No, and you know, saying that uh, what was in the report was that he's on, what, £615,000 a week? About 800000 He's denied US that, of course. He's denied that? Even if it's, you know, 20% of that, he's, yeah, he's still, fine. still. You're looking at an incredible amount of money. And you know, he's had issues with homesickness pretty much mm. all his career. At Manchester City, he said he wanted to go back to Argentina, play with Boca Juniors. Instead, he went to Juventus. And then after Juventus, he, had, he went to Boca, where you thought, okay, he's gonna end his career there. I guess it didn't turn out that way, did it? I mean, it's, it, it's incredible, you know, missing your food, Whatever, just get on with it. And they, I'm sure they've made him very comfortable there as well. Uh, just two things to that. He's got an entourage of 19 people, by the way, and he's in the most international city <laughs> in China. So you should have no problems with food. Uh, anyway, another person who's struggling, but for very different reasons, also from South America, by the way, mm. is Alexandra Pato, who plays for Tianjin Quantian. And uh, he's had a very poor time of it, Roshan. First of all, missing four fantastic opportunities on match day one, and then a penalty to win the game for Tianjin. Well, it shouldn't have been a penalty. I thought it was very harsh. Uh, that penalty was given uh, Wang Lin with a supposed handball. Uh, but, you know, so maybe a little bit of justice was served. But when you are put in that situation, as Pato was, mm. with the investment that was made in him, you know, you're one of the star players in the side. You need to be putting away those opportunities because they can cost you points, cost you games. Uh, what was nice was uh, Fabio Cannavaro's reaction on the sidelines. I think he just gave his assistant a little bit of a smile, a wry smile there. But uh, Going back to that week one against Guangzhou RNF where you had four clear-cut opportunities, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, really should have put at least one of those away. It's not gotten off to a great start. In fact, it's not been a great few years for Alexandre Pato. I was just going to say, he, the, the, the star was burning so brightly, he went back to get injury problems, he went back to Brazil, had a very strange spell That's in right. Chelsea, and it's all gone very wrong. It has gone very wrong and he's got to try and find it quickly because the only way he can find that confidence is to put the ball into the back of the net. There's no one that can really help them, uh, help mm. him with that. So, you know, he's got to do uh, deliver the goods on the pitch. Now, we're going to talk about a bit of controversy in the Chinese Super League. And, uh, well, Beijing go on to playing Guizhou. And in the very last minute of the game, a goal was disallowed because it was not judged to have crossed the line when, in fact, it actually had. So, we're back to this whole debate of goal line technology. Should the CSL bring it in? I think so. I think, uh, you know, if you can afford it, you should definitely bring it in. Uh, they certainly can afford it. We've seen the money being splashed around in the league. So it's something that, you know, with goal line, uh, with goals, you know, it's so important, as we mentioned, you know, results, are, you know, goals can change the games yeah. and you, you want uh, to make sure you're accurate in those situations. It was quite clear from, from my point of view when I had a look at that game that the goalkeeper actually caught it behind the line. Quite what he was doing, positioning himself behind the goal line anyway. Uh, it's another debate uh, to be had, but uh, I think Beijing Guan a little bit unfortunate in that situation. I thought overall in the game, they perhaps didn't deserve, yeah. to, to didn't do enough to come away with all three points, but you know, goal line technology, I, need to, I think it needs to come into the game over there. Well, it cost, it cost them three points, isn't it, in the end? And it's a bigger question that we have in world football about Absolutely. how technology can improve the game. It takes just a few seconds. I think some old buddy daddies in FIFA need to really wake up and smell the coffee on that one. But for now, we're going to move to undoubtedly the biggest result in the Chinese Super League this week. And that was Shandong Luneng defeating Guangzhou Evergrande. They haven't lost this earlier stage since they became Evergrande. And this is a, a massive setback for the club. It's the first time that Shandong have yeah. ever defeated Guangzhou in the Chinese Super League. Amazing result. Amazing result. And Shandong have been brilliant uh, in the CSL so far. Mm. You know, they might not play a very nice passing game or passing football, but they certainly know how to use Graziano Pella really well. Knocking those long direct yeah. balls into him, using his physical presence. And then you've got players rushing in onto those second balls, onto those rebounds. And, 
finishing off those opportunities. You know, I thought Wu Han and Liu Bin Bin came uh, in for Shandong off the bench and they certainly added lots of pace uh, to the Shandong Lunan side. Guangzhou, you know, were uh, not quite their normal selves uh, They haven't this been match. for a while, have they? they? They haven't. Having said that though, they had a good start to the season with winning the Super Cup, winning their first match, which was tough against Beijing, uh, Guo'an. But now, two weeks uh, after their international break, I think a few weeks after uh, this last game, They've got Shanghai SIPG coming up. Cool. That should be a real cracker of a contest, but hasn't been the greatest of starts. It's been difficult in terms of the fixtures for Guangzhou Evergrande, but Shandong Luneng look like they're flying at the moment. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on that one for Shandong Luneng, and they will not be happy when we look at the table because they aren't used to being uh, far from the top, bro, Russian. Yeah, they aren't, but look at that. Shan uh, Shanghai SIPG, Shandong Luneng, both with great starts to the league, and Guangzhou RNF. I think that's a, a surprise name early on, picking up two big results. But uh, you expect it to level out a little bit as the season goes on and they meet some tougher challenges. Uh, Jiangsu Suning in 15th, that's a big surprise. They really struggled in their last game, a nil-all draw in that one. And they were really missing Roger Martinez and Alex Teixeira. Well, those guys, uh, well, some of them as well, will be in action, of course, during the Chinese Super League, which will be boosted uh, this coming week because there is no CSL in the coming weekend. So they've kind of got this, it's helping them with this extended international break, mm. helping the national team and helping CSL teams in the Champions League. Yeah, it's good. I mean, they're supporting uh, the national team and those teams that are involved uh, in the AFC Champions League will obviously feel the, the, the benefit of it. Uh, from a viewer's perspective, it's not the best. You know, <laughs> just two matches in and uh, momentum for teams yeah. as well. It, it kind of goes away, especially for teams that aren't involved uh, in continental competition. Well, we look forward, of course, to seeing how those teams perform. As we mentioned, international break this coming week for the Chinese Super League. But as always, do leave us your comments. We'd love to hear from you and join us on our Facebook page, Chinese Super League Asia Fans Club. Until the next time, from Misha Zadak and Rich Roshan Rai, thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you soon.